thank you very much for the opportunity to present today. Um, I'm going to show you some of the great work that we're doing in Digital Earth Australia, making use of the do open data cube to answer questions, particularly around water um, across the Australian landscape. So um, we've got petabytes of uh, satellite information across Australia. And, and what we've done with our Open Data Cube instance in Digital Earth Australia is fill it with analysis ready data. So analysis ready data is a really important concept um, for what we've been able to do with Digital Earth Australia, um, because it means that all of the satellite imagery is pre-processed. Um, all of the imagery has been author rectified. So all of the kind of wiggles of the direction of the, the, the capture have been, been um, sorted out. It's been calibrated and it's been turned into a time series so that we can look at every individual pixel in and know that we can analyze them through time um, and the imagery has been corrected enabling us to do that using the open data cube technology so we have petabytes of data um, across all of australia going back since 1987 every 16 days or so and there's literally infinite ways that we can analyze that information and so our job here is to turn that data into something that's actually useful and what you see in the background here is a bit of a buff of imagery that has been produced, um, various ways that you can actually go about visualizing the information, um, making use of the open data cube so that we can pre-process and um, automate the processing of those um, that data set. Um, and so the really big question becomes not so much of what can we do, but why? What are we actually wanting to, to find out? What are the big questions that we're trying to answer? And so I'm just gonna walk you through just a couple of case studies that go through some of those questions that we've been able to answer making use of Open Data Cube technology. So the first question um, that we were asked by some of our stakeholders was, okay, you've got access to this satellite archive. Can you use it to tell us where water bodies are across, particularly the Murray-Darling Basin um, and how the water in them is changing over time? So this was a question posed by a stakeholder wanting to make use of satellite imagery to, um, to uh, supplement the information that they already had in this area. So for those of you not in Australia, the Murray-Darling Basin is a very large inland catchment. It covers um, a huge portion of the continent. So if you can imagine the size of Australia, we're looking at something about a fifth of the size of the continent. Um, and we have a huge amount of agricultural production in this area. So it's a really important area to be able to understand. Um, it's also out quite remote. So there's, there's settlements throughout, but there are big areas where there's really not a lot of people going um, out there regularly. So making use of satellite information to understand what's happening in these areas is a really um, important uh, uh, opportunity. So we have a product that we've produced called Water Observations from Space. And what it does is it takes the complete archive of satellite imagery um, and compresses it down into a layer that basically tells you how frequently water is observed in every pixel across the entire Australian continent. So I've taken a small snapshot of that archive here. Um, and what you get is this beautiful image of a lake system in, in kind of the arid Northern part of Australia. And the colors that you're seeing here will tell you how frequently water is observed. So where you can see red colors yellow colours, we're seeing water in only about sort of one to five percent of total observations. Um, through the, the green spectrum into the blue colours, um, we're starting to see water occur more frequently. And what this allows us to do is build up a really clear picture of how water is moving through the landscape, how frequently we can expect it in different locations. And this is a really valuable data set, um, but we want to be able to look at a lake. Um, pixels are really useful um, for being able to do individual kind of small scale analyses, but we don't really care about how all of the individual pixels in the lake are doing. We actually want to look at the lake as a whole. So we've developed a product that turns that raster data set into a vector data set, which basically means we've just taken it, drawn a big line around it and looked at them um, as a series of objects. So rather than 100 pixels that make up a lake, you now have one lake object. And across Australia, we were able to do this um, using uh, Python scripts and the Open Data Cube so that we can automate the detection of those lake systems. And we mapped about 300,000 water bodies across the entire continent using that methodology. For every single one of those water bodies, we've been um, looked at the individual satellite observations that have been um, collected for each water body and looked at how the surface area of water inside of those individual objects has changed over time. So here as an example, we've got a, um, a 
pretend lake in our, our red box. And in our first time step, with satellites passed overhead and we can see that it's all blue. So we're seeing water across the entire surface area of that lake. Um, time B, um, we're looking at about a 40% coverage of water and C, um, only a 5%. And if you take those 300,000 water bodies and you do this for every single one of them, for every single satellite observation, what you get back is a really rich time history of how each individual water body has changed over time. And here's just one example of that. This is um, a lake system just outside of Canberra where we are. Um, and you can see that we've made this information publicly available. It's in a web um, website. You can go into that website and you can access this information, click on any water body, and when you get back on the bottom is a time history of that changing percentage of surface area. So this product was developed um, based off the requirements of a stakeholder and making use of um, the, the kind of tool set that comes with the Open Data Cube. So we're also able to answer other questions. Um, one of the other questions we have addressed or started to address is um, particularly um, in that part of, the, of, the, of Australia, we have a lot of very dry um, locations and we have people grazing stock out there. And so we've used, made use of this information to answer the question, how much surface water is available for stock? And every single month we produce a map like this with our collaborators in the New South Wales state government. And what it does is it takes the latest satellite observations across the, the state. And it tells you how much water compared to how much water could be there if every single one of those water bodies was completely covered in water, how much water is there actually now. And this has been a really powerful tool to help um, agricultural um, managers understand the, the availability of surface water across the state. And the final case study I wanted to share was, okay, so we know that we can map water, we can do that in a reasonably quick time frame. What about for a place, uh, for a, a use case where we really need to have information fast? So um, if you are a firefighter and a fire has just broken out, can we tell you where the closest open water is to that fire ground? So this is some prototyping work that we're doing at the moment, or in the process of producing an operational system that does this. Uh, but in this map, you can see the red, yellow, and orange are hot spots. So they're areas that have been detected as anomalously warm. Um, and in this location, it corresponds to a fire. Um, the uh, red ones are the most recent observations through to yellow, the oldest. And what we've done here is just intersect this information with the water bodies data set so that we can get an understanding of the water bodies that have observed water in them in the last 30 days um, within a certain distance of the fire ground. And in reality, what that actually looks like is something like this. We've got some um, flight paths added into our map in the background. And what you can see is the type of um, the, the water bodies that these um, particular aircraft have gone to to collect water to fight in this fire ground. So this is a really important piece of information because not only do they need to know that there is water available there, they also need to know the characteristics of that water. Because if you've got a helicopter, you can get water from a swimming pool, but if you've got a fixed wing aircraft that you're using as a water, um, a water fighting tool, you need to know that the water body is of a certain size so that the plane has time to get in and get out again. So we're working with stakeholders um, to answer all sorts of questions across Australia. And I've just chucked a bunch of them in here. Um, and basically the, the key takeaway message is that we have so much information that's been available um, across Australia because of the, the richness of the, the Landsat archive that we have and the Sentinel now that that's being um, collected as well. Um, and so the big, the big thing that we have to do is speak with our stakeholders and understand what questions is that they want to actually answer using the data and how we can go about supporting that. Um, and we've really been able to provide some, some, some new insights that have allowed for enhanced um, decision-making capability using satellite information um, that wouldn't have been available if it wasn't for the ability to do those bulk large-scale processing um, using the Open Data Cube technologies. So thank you very much.